Today we're going to go through three different sections of our chapter 10 on the geometry of solids. We're going to talk about volume formulas today of prism cylinders, pyramids, cones, and spheres. So we're going to squeeze a whole bunch of stuff into one lesson today, and so the notes might be just a little bit longer because of that. But let's just go through the formulas on the first page, and then we will go through more examples. So when we talk about volume, volume is the measure of the amount of space contained in a solid. The, the measure of the amount of space contained in a solid. So when we talked about two-dimensional area, we were looking at square units. So you look at how many squares you could fill in to the particular space. But when we talk about a three-dimensional object, we are talking about three-dimensional space. So if you extend that square into three dimensions, you have a cube. So when we talk about volume, we're going to be talking about how many little cubes that we can fit inside of the object. So we're going to talk about cube units. So use cube units. And so abbreviations for cube units would be like centimeters cubed, which is also called cubic centimeters, or inches cubed. And you could write out cubed inches, or feet cubed, or yards cubed, etc. But you're talking about cube units because we're looking at three dimensions, length, width, and height, and how many of those we can fit in. So our first series of shapes would be prisms and cylinders, and prisms and cylinders have the same general formula for how you would get their volume. The volume of the prism or cylinder is the area of the base multiplied by the height. So here we have a hexagonal prism and so if we're looking at the area of the base, we're looking at this area right here. So if it's a regular hexagon, we'd use ASN divided by 2 to get that area. Otherwise, we would have to get the area in some other way. And then you are looking at the height that is perpendicular to that base. So if this is a right hexagonal prism, then this length right here would be the height and if it's not a right hexagonal prism, if it's oblique, you'd need to get the perpendicular height. So the area of the base times the height. Same thing is true of a cylinder. To get the area, or to get the volume of a cylinder, you're looking at the area of the base. So in this case, it's a circle, pi r squared. And then you'd be multiplying that times the perpendicular height. And so if it's a right cylinder, then you just multiply it times this segment here. If it's a oblique cylinder, then you would have to figure out what the perpendicular height would be of that cylinder. Now, both of those have the same formula, area of the base times the height. Our next set of solids were pyramids and cones, and they're also connected together. We'll let capital B stand for the area of the base, and so capital B is the area of the base of the pyramid or cone, and h is the height of the pyramid or cone. Then the formula for the volume is the area of the base times the height divided by 3. So capital B is the area of the base, h stands for the height of the entire pyramid or cone divided by 3. Right, so basically, think about what that means, is that you could take, here's a pyramid right here. If you made a prism out of this pyramid, so if it's say this one's a pentagonal pyramid right here, because you can see the bottom of it, the base of it, is a pentagon. So that's a pentagonal pyramid. But if we filled this up with water right here, this object with water, it would take three of these to fit inside of one prism that has the same base. 
So if you made a prism out of this with the same base area, it would take three of these to fill it up. So therefore, the pyramid is one-third of it, or area of the base times height divided by three. So the area of the base times the height, so there's our height, and then we'll divide that by three. Same thing is true of a cone, area of the base times the height divided by three. And again, this cone right here, three of these cones would fit inside the same cylinder or would fit inside a cylinder with the same base. So if you made a cylinder out of this right here, right here, it would take three of those cones to fill up one of those cylinders. So that's where we get our formula, and you can try that out. We have sometimes tried that out in class. But this time, we are just going to give you the formula. Our final formula is the volume of a sphere. And the volume of a sphere with radius r, so we're going to let r stand for the radius, is given by the formula volume is equal to 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So that's the one where you really have a new formula right here that we have to remember. I, you know, whenever you have a volume formula, somewhere in it, you're going to have the variable multiplied by itself three times. Notice this R cubed, uh, because that would be a volume. And if you look at any area formulas, you might have an R squared, like the area of a circle is pi R squared, because it's an area. So even within this general volume formula up here for a pyramid or cone, when you multiply the area of the base times the height, somewhere in here you're going to have three variables, like an x cubed that is going to happen, or a length times width times height. Again, three variables that are being multiplied whenever you have a volume formula.